I have been to this area before and there is some nice old stuff in the area. In fact, some of you may remember that house right there. That's actually where I got those motorcycle helmets and those uh, Komodo boots, the Vince Komodo boots that I just put up. That's pretty funny that uh, that's one of the last sales that I went to. And here we are back in the same area. Amazing. <laughs> How cool is this street by the way? I feel like I'm in the Wizard of Oz. So the way this works, if you didn't see my video yesterday, is I had to make an appointment with the estate sale dealer and I made the appointment first thing. So I'm in the first round to get into the house, nine o'clock in the morning here on a Saturday. So there's supposed to be a limited number of people that are allowed to go in at the same time. We're all supposed to wear masks and you know stay socially distancing from one another. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. And in case you were all wondering, here's my Doctor Who mask. I got it off of Etsy. I love it. Yes! All right, so here we are. I walk in for the first time looking for the comic books. I find them, and my heart sinks when I see the prices and the condition. Not altogether surprising, uh, because this often happens at estate sales when you find comic books. The dealers tend to think that they are worth much more than they really are with rare exception. So, you know, I still get excited though because you never know, but uh, those are just not worth it. It's not that you can't do well with coverless comic books. Uh, you can, but you want them to be your own cast-offs and preferably you want them to be superhero-related ones and those are not, as you'll see later. A Tarzan actually does not sell well, believe it or not, even though he's a popular character. Uh, very tough to move Tarzan-related materials. Now, these comics I actually wound up picking up because they didn't have any crazy price tag on them. They're a little digest, essentially, is what we call them. I tend to sell them in lots when I could uh, lump them together with uh, similar themes, like a bunch of Richie Rich ones or Archie ones, that, that sort of thing. Now, I'm always on the lookout for uh, cassette tapes, cassette recorders. I always make sure I have batteries with me, as you could see there. And this is just me putting the batteries in to test the device. And you can see there, it lights up. And I do have a cassette tape with me as well uh, in that blue bag of mine. Uh, headphones, uh, pick them up, especially if you can find matching ones, and uh, just take those along with you as well. Uh, these are slide rules. Uh, you may remember from a prior estate sale, I picked up a ton of slide rules. I actually still have them, and uh, I meant to list them soon, and I think I will put them up soon, but you know, it was good to... Uh, add these to the mix because now that just adds value to the lot. So, you know, don't feel bad about holding on to stuff sometimes because, you know, if you go to another sale and you find something similar to it, you haven't sold it yet, just lump it together with it and, you know, now you've got a better uh, deal for somebody. So I was checking out the pencils inside. Don't ignore the pencils, but there wasn't anything good there. You look for good advertising. This is a really cool keyboard. Uh, keys you see. So you can see it's bright yellow. It's um, big letters. This is for people who have visual impairments. And so these go for, in pre-owned state, you go for around $40 or so. So uh, always check into keyboards. Uh, there's another slide rule. Sometimes they're uh, circular, sometimes they're straight. There was a really old Mac computer there, and if I was College Picker, I would have purchased it. You got to check out College Picker, by the way, on YouTube. He's amazing. I interviewed him on my channel. He buys this type of stuff all the time, and he repairs it. Uh, but I don't have those skills, and so I just wound up leaving it there once I found I couldn't charge it up. Uh, but I didn't ignore the accessories. So there were all these little accessories in this box, uh, plugs, uh, different types of um, uh, AC cords. Uh, like here, right, right there, you could see there's a, a power supply. Look those things up. It's very easy to find uh, comps on them. That one's about $40. And it's the type of thing that a lot of people miss. Now, that's a good one there. It's a little transistor radio. Uh, that one, there were values of like $100 on that thing. So no, it just depends, like up to a hundred bucks. So here you could see uh, just th the state of these comics. Again, not only are they, they coverless, but the titles just aren't great. You're dealing with a bunch of Archie ones, uh, you know, Betty and Veronica, very comic strip types of ones uh, in there as well. You know, you really want to have like Superman, Spider-Man, you know, Batman. If you had those, 
uh, and it was that many. That I might have actually uh, picked up for 50 bucks, depending on how old they were, but not those. And you can see here with these Mad Magazines, I buy big lots of Mad Magazines, but and I do tell you, don't worry sometimes about cover damage, like if there's a little... Uh, if there's a rip, if there's some some stains here and there, uh, even if you have a few with the covers removed, but this it was just far too many had damage on them, so I just wound up uh, leaving them there. There just would have been too many I would have had to discard for the seventy five dollar uh, price tag, uh, and they were pretty firm on the price. It's ironic, everything there the price was reasonable. Wait till you see what I got everything for today. Uh, but the one exception was the comic books, and they actually had a small. Uh, little like I'd say 10 comic books upstairs next to the checkout area so they could guard it and they were just like these they were in terrible shape um, they were just not good titles and for like 10 comic books they literally had a price tag of a hundred dollars on them and they, they were just not even worth anything close to that I wouldn't even have paid ten dollars for them there's uh, headphones okay now this room this room is a, a bit of a weakness for me because it's really mostly a a woman's room with woman's clothes and that is not something that I specialize in and so what I try to do in these situations where I'm trying to learn something new is I try to fixate on something that I have a pretty good sense of that I could do well just by uh, looking for certain themes. So what I was looking for in here were things that were uh, brightly colored and stood out to me. And the first thing that stood out was this hat. So uh, I, I really was picturing someone who might wear something like this over at a derby. Uh, and this uh, was another example. So I wound up uh, picking up both of them. Mistake to try to balance those on top of one another. So uh, off they go into the box right there. Big thumbs up. So now uh, I was looking for t-shirts. And I was trying to look for anything with a cool theme on it. So there was this Mardi Gras one. There was this uh, brightly colored one with the frogs. And there was another one. I don't know what happened to the footage of it, but it was another animal themed one like that like a rainforesty one now this one you know, i talk about her a lot i talk about jesse shops if you go to instagram you see she's always trying on these new dresses at thrift shops and stuff and uh she always gets like real brightly colored ones and i always talk about that with clothes it's for guys too if you see brightly colored clothing you know you know it's something that, uh, you know, really you could do well on because people like big, bold colors. So what I focused on here were the dresses that had the boldest colors. So let me know, people who are watching this, uh, either live with me on a premiere or who are watching it afterwards, if you think I did all right with these uh, dresses here. And if you saw one that, you know, you would have picked up that I didn't, let me know. Now, this again, I thought of Jesse Shops because I figured this would be something she would uh, be interested in. Uh, not, I'm not saying to purchase for me. I'm just saying like that would be like her kind of style. Like, you know, she might get with the ladybugs on it and had like little buttons on it, like ladybug bug buttons and stuff. Uh, you know, those other things look bland. Now, this is a theme or a color theme that I look for. It's with that teal and the pink and the black. I've done very well with that uh, grouping of colors. Uh, so I picked that one up. There's a jacket there. And, you know, and I'm just going through. And remember, you know, we're under some type of a time pressure here. So you have to operate uh, faster than uh, usual. And so, again, I'm, you know, you're looking for a uh, certain theme. So this, again, I'm looking brightly colored. Here we've got a bunch of advertisements, something that stands out, something bold. And so I thought this jacket was really neat. They're all, I believe, a size small. So, you know, whoever you know owned these clothing was a small. So uh, that is a bit of a limitation uh, because there's not as many people uh, out there shopping who are small. So they might sit for a little bit, but I think the bold colors will sell them to someone who is a small. This one I hemmed and hawed on. I decided to put the footage on because I wanted your feedback. Is this something you would have purchased? Did I make a mistake not getting this? You know, it didn't fit my theme of brightly colored. Neither did this. Uh, the bags. I do sell bags. I've, I've talked about bags before. Again, it's not an area I specialize in, so I dabble here and there in it. Um, this one I thought of getting because of the flowers and there were some little beads there, like little, I don't know, fake pearls and stuff, but it had four bucks on it. And 
I, I probably would have been able to get it for lower than that, but it's just like, nah, I'm not sure. So you let me know uh, in the comments. Now this, I always say look on the bottom of things, and I'm much better dealing with stuff like media. And here you go. There's a bunch of blank media, blank cassettes, sealed cassettes. Anytime you could find that, pick it up. It is a guaranteed seller, especially if you have a little lot like that. I think those are 90-minute uh, cassettes sealed. Uh, here's another room I walked into, and uh, there really was not much here. Uh, a lot of these rooms, there's really not that much there. Uh, always look below you. There's a mat that is an O'Reilly, Bill O'Reilly one from Fox News, and uh, just no one is interested in him right now, so it doesn't sell. A long time ago, it would have been different. This is pretty cool, so I had to get the batteries in it and put them in you, those are dead and you'll hear for in a second that it actually uh works once i put the batteries in so i'll just shut up hopefully you heard that at, we'll see when it comes out uh so bye bye room let's go on to the next one and over here uh if you walk straight low no, maybe that's a different room. I can't remember now. Uh, there's so many rooms that looked alike in this house. But uh, there wasn't that much in here for me. It was like a bunch of, um, like, you know, things women were putting their hair to keep their hair up, like scrunchies and stuff and, you know, old bottles of women's cologne. So anyway, I walked up the stairs, walked into this room. This was one of the better items I found this uh this mouse, it's new in box. Some of the comps on it were like $90 or so. So I'm not saying I'll get that much out of it, but there were some high comps. So picking it up for a couple bucks is good. Here's another lesson. You see things in a bag like this and the bag could kind of be, you know, kind of have like a, a covering on it that obscures what the item is a little bit. And, you know, take it out of the bag, look at it. It'll make it more bright, easier to see test it out. That one works. That's about a $40 to $50 recorder. This also, this is a stapler, vintage stapler. Pick up these stationary pieces here. That's a great one for a buck. That sells for around $30. So a lot of little things could add up for like $20, $30 sales. Um, this is the room I was thinking of before. Uh, there's this Dunkin' Donuts scarf. Dunkin' Donuts, another great brand to pick up. Uh, it says something about uh, join the espresso club or something. Uh, people love that type of thing. So just you know, grab that. Anything Dunkin' Donuts whenever you could see it. This must be the guy's version of the, of the house. There wasn't much there. Again, I was looking for brightly colored. I found this shirt. I was interested in it. Uh, I thought it had some potential. But unfortunately, there was no label on it and there was no... There, there was nothing on it I could easily keyword, so I wound up leaving it there, but let me know if you would have uh, picked it up. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Now, there was an upstairs area, and I was able to pick this up. I didn't show it to you because the state sale dealer was right there during checkout, and I didn't want to just whip out the phone and just start recording stuff. So uh, this was the only piece, though. It was basically a room with like a bunch of uh, old books and like, cookbooks and stuff. So really wasn't much to see. In terms of the total price, that uh, big box that I filled up with all those goodies uh, there, hopefully you could see the total price there. $39 even for everything. Uh, no tax because they have my reseller tax certificate on file. So make sure that you uh, use that if you haven't done that yet. But this is a great way to start the estate sale uh, season. They also confirmed for me that for them, it looks like this is the way to go. And you know, I was thinking about it when I was talking with them and I said, you know, this actually might not be bad for you because instead of what normally happens, you have a rush of people that come into the sale at the beginning and then they leave and you may have like a trickle of like one or two people throughout the day that come in and they're pretty much sitting there for a long time. So in this way, if you have people coming in at nine, people coming in at 10, 11, 12, it's great because, you know, for them, they've got a new fresh set of individuals coming through. So they actually said they liked it better too because they didn't have a mob of people at the checkout counter. So, you know, who knows? I'm always trying to find the positives in things and uh, to be able to get there. And that first uh, group was awesome because I got all the best stuff. I saw their schedule. They had a bunch of people scheduled at that early slot. That's where most people uh, for, at least for this sale, uh, took the time slots from. So be mindful of that if this model is going on in your area. 
most people are gonna try to probably take that bottom slot. So if you can get there in the beginning, get there in the beginning, monitor your emails, monitor your phone for messages so you can respond and be one of the first ones through the door. Oh, here's Daisy. She's been waiting to say hello. Hi, Daisy. Hey, let's go out, look at those paws. Hey, say hi to all your fans. You know, Thrifty Esme said you didn't want to be a YouTube star. Tell her you're wrong about that. Tell her she's wrong. No, you're not at the wrong channel. The Primetime Treasure Hunter does like to eat some healthy stuff every once in a while. I do like shredded lettuce, believe it or not. I find it really refreshing, especially, you know, with some nice uh, sliced up tomato. I've got some grilled chicken here with some uh, salt sprinkled on top, some mayo underneath. Of course, we've got some Mountain Dew. And we cannot forget the sub oil. Mmm. There we go. I am famous for making sandwiches around here, so let's dig in. All right, so after that delicious sandwich, we are back down here, Primetime Treasure headquarters, to pull some inventory off the shelves that just sold. And uh, the first uh, two pieces I'm gonna show you both go out to the same buyer. I'm not sure if it's someone who watches the channel, but if so, let me know and I'll shout you out uh, in the next video. It's uh, two Captain America prints and I told you about uh, this one yesterday. I still have a bunch more if you're interested. Another one goes up as soon as this one uh, goes down. And then another Captain America uh, print, a uh, different one, uh, is going along with it. And you can see here on the top, these were signed by the artist uh, John Hebert. Uh, the story behind these is that John Hebert, who is uh, local here uh, to central New York, uh, he went into a comic shop and he signed uh, each one of these uh, prints for a dollar a piece and there were around a hundred of them. So he made a hundred bucks that day just by signing his name a hundred times. Well, the person who had them uh, couldn't sell them and then he gave them to somebody else who couldn't sell them. I saw them, said that I wanted them. It was part of a bulk purchase and the person said, you know what, I can't sell these so you just have them. So I have found that they all sell for 15 bucks. I just set it at that price. I just wait for people to come along and purchase it. I never lower the price on it, just straight out $15. And uh, it's, it's worked out great. Um, most of them are gone. I do have some left though, with all sorts of different characters available to see in my eBay store. Now the next one, I really wanna thank Stephanie, who is a new viewer to the channel. Uh, she said she's been watching it for a few weeks and she doesn't miss uh, an episode and I'm super pumped to hear that. I really appreciate that. Uh, just for that, I'm gonna give you subscriber of the day, Stephanie, and for this purchase. Uh, remember this yesterday that went up? Uh, this was for Monsieur Brunard and his uh, ventriloquist uh, dummy, uh, Joe Flips. So uh, this one here with the signature from the 1980s, this sold today for $49.99, so $50 purchase. Thank you again very much, uh, Stephanie. Now, my first sale this morning that I woke up to, and I'm really excited about uh, this one as well. We gotta see here, I have it somewhere here on the shelf. Where to, ah, here it is, back here. The Holly Hobby Bag. So you remember me uh, showing this uh, yesterday. So this one went to Jesse Shops, so thank you. I always say go to jesse.shops on Instagram. Uh, I'm gonna link to it again down below in my description section, so everyone should go check it out. Uh, she is uh, Soul Sisters with Mrs. Primetime, and uh, she purchased this uh, again today for $25. So uh, thank you, we're very happy that it is going to you. We know that it's going to have an awesome home. All right, so the last item to pull for now is a signed Playboy cover of Candace Michelle. Some of you who are wrestling fans may know uh, Candace Michelle, uh, she's right over uh, here. So she's known for her WWE Diva days. She was on the Diva search. Uh, outside of wrestling, she's known as the Go Daddy Girl. So can't beat that name. <laughs> anyway, so this one sold for $14.99. So gonna get this one out as well. You can see the signature uh, down below as well. Came out of a private estate sale pick. Uh, one of the ones that came along with all those art prints that I've shown you before. Have nothing invested into it uh, anymore. So just going out, gonna pack it up. So after I filmed that last sequence, Mrs. Primetime opened the door and she yelled down, go daddy girl, for real? <laughs> so I thought I'd pass that on to you because a lot of times she rolls her eyes at some of the stuff that I say and some of the stuff I do. But anyway, I was going to uh, 
pull one of these pictures out uh, again. And as I was strumming my finger, I love saying strumming my fingers along the top because I can't play a musical instrument. So the best I could do is strum my fingers along the top of the photos here. And I came across this He-Man Masters of the Universe folder. Now I remember where I got it and I knew I had it somewhere, but um, I forgot what was actually inside of it. Now you'll see here that this actually comes from Filmation Studios that made He-Man Masters of the Universe. And inside, there is a promotional insert promoting He-Man and She-Ra together for the Secret of the Sword movie. And you can see there, that comes from 1985. And then on the bottom, you've got the characters and stuff. So super cool piece. I'm going to put that up. And then maybe tomorrow we'll go and check out what the She-Ra one is. All right, so now we're going to go over to the posters. And I apologize. I have not zoomed in close enough to these titles so you could see them. And I haven't held it on long enough so here you could see and if there's anyone you want me to pull out let me know either by color uh, or by something you see on there or by the number and i'll grab it now i'm going to give flipping particles credit from the flipping particles youtube channel because she actually paused it and then used her magnifying glass to say she wanted this one here that says wanted on it so we're going to grab this one out and we'll see what it says Looks like it's a Batman one because it says Arkham City. So we'll check this one out and see what it looks like. Okay, so you know how Pink Panther guards the postcards? <laughs> looks like he fell asleep or something on the job. But uh, we've got Godzilla now. Yes, that is an authentic 70s uh, Shogun Godzilla who is guarding some of the clothes here because we have some of Mrs. Primetime stuff in there that's going up for sale from when she was a little girl. So... A perfect example was this Holly Hobby bag that I showed you earlier. Uh, but another one is this little blue uh, beaded bag. I mean, this is amazing. This you know goes back to the to the 1970s. Amazing, and you know even inside, it looks really nice. So we're gonna put this up if anyone is interested uh, in that. In the meantime, if anyone comes over here and they try to like put their hand in there to steal like Skeletor or something, although he's still in the hospital, you know Godzilla. You can see here. The flame comes right down like that. And then, if you have not seen this before, it's really cool what Godzilla could do with his arm. I actually just took a pause here to get Skeletor out of hospital on a day pass just to experiment here uh, to show you what Godzilla's arm could do. There's a secret button here uh, that you could press. And uh, watch this. Watch what happens. Oh, man. Oh, man. Skeletor totally laid out again. Man, oh, that's bad. All right, so another item that just sold is this Fidges Agency t-shirt. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, this uh, comes from the season premiere of season seven of the TV show Archer from FX. So a nice easy sale here. Uh, we're gonna replace that t-shirt with another t-shirt that I have here. Well, very good poster that D from Flippin' Particles picked out because I can't find any comps on this one, and this is just amazing. You've got the Joker here, you've got Two-Face, you've got Catwoman, the Penguin, and the Riddler. I mean, this is awesome. Someone's definitely going to want to display this. It's 34 inches by 22. I'm going to post this in the store, and if anyone's interested, you know where to find it. Now, speaking of the Joker, that actually reminded me when I saw that poster that I had another one of these Joker prints, I thought, in my eBay store, uh, but I went and checked and I actually didn't have it listed. I just never put the replacement back up. So I have two more of them, so I just photographed this one. This is another one of that series that's uh, signed by John Hebert, uh, as you could see. So I'm gonna put this one back up for any Joker fans. So while this may seem like a generic pink Mickey Mouse shirt. It actually uh, dates back about 11 years. It's a youth large, so there's not any of those actually available right now. People are nostalgic for Disney World, Disneyland, you know, because, you know, Disney World, Magic Kingdom shut down and stuff. So uh, might have some appeal to somebody right now. I want to give you a little tip, though, with regards to uh, taking your pictures of shirts in general. So you can see there I am using a wood hanger. For a very important reason, it looks much more professional than if you use a plastic hanger. Let me show you the difference with the plastic hanger. So there it is with the plastic hanger. Which one would you rather purchase? I'd rather purchase the one that had 
the wood hanger, even though they're identical, it just presents better and that increases the chance that you're gonna make the sale. The plastic hangers are cheap, the wood hangers are not. Cheap detracts from the overall presentation of your product. The wood hanger enhances perception and increases the chance that you will make the sale. So this is a cool idea that Mrs. Primetime came up with to make some more buttons from the button making video that I showed you the other day. So go check that one out if you haven't seen it. But these originally were some stickers and they're stickers for different states as you can see. And so she just took them out and she just made a lot of 50 buttons based on all of the stickers. So I'm gonna list those on eBay as well for her. Uh, you can see here is just another tip on taking a little bit of extra time. I just put them in alphabetical order. You know, they were in this bag and so just took them out. And you know, how much extra time did that take just to put them in order? Not much and that really helps because when someone's looking to see if their state is there or a particular state, you know, they could easily check it, easily find it. Remember, people get impatient really fast. So uh, shout out by the way to Ivana and Jesse Shops who said they were influenced by that video to start making buttons. All right, we're gonna wrap up with two items that sold. I'm gonna grab them with my eyes closed for Colin's corner. He was remarking how he was freaked out in prior videos, how I was just reaching back and grabbing items without looking at them. So he wanted me to do something with my eyes closed. So here you go, Colin, like a Michael Jordan free throw. I'm gonna close my eyes here. I'm gonna reach back and, oh, look at this. We've got uh, one of the items that's sold. This is uh, what looks like a book, but inside it's uh, actually a uh, comic related material that's in there. Now you can't really see it too well from here. Let me lay it down here so you could see it. Uh, so you could see even though things could look like traditional books, they actually could have comic stuff inside. So that one sold for $12.99. And then the other one, oops, I gotta do this with my eyes closed again. Sorry, Colin. So let's see here. Let's reach back. And this one here, we've got Demigod. It's not someone you should pay particular attention to. Uh, this is actually a long, uh, thin, hardcover book. Same thing as you could see inside. We've got uh, comic book related material in there. Um, you know, it's a kind of an obscure title. It's just something that came along with a bigger lot of comic books. And so, as you can see though, these, uh, you know, individual 10 to $20 purchases, they sure add up uh, throughout the day and throughout the year. So that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed the return to treasure hunting and some of the other antics uh, throughout the day. I just uh, purchased actually a stuffed animal through Lee Numbers through the Support That Seller Sunday event. So it's early Sunday morning. I uh, just had a lot going on today, so wrapping up the video now. Uh, and this stuffed animal is a doctor, it's a dog doctor. And so I figured Skeletor can need the help. So look for him in future videos. <laughs> All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you at the next one. Take care.